Is there any uh, thing that you're going to be looking at in the next 12 to 18 months with respect to healthcare investment that's like a bellwether that you could leave any of the folks with to say, hey, look at this, and this is going to tell you the way things are going to go? Just, just curious if you had a, uh, anything that you look at in that, in that way. Yeah, maybe from the pharma services perspective, which we haven't really spent any time talking about, um, there's a lot of technology that can be applied to that process. It costs around $2 billion to bring a drug to market. Uh, it's very inefficient. There's a lot of inequalities in terms of who participates in clinical trials. And so the, the incorporation of AI and technologies into that process, one, will help reduce the costs to help bring medicines faster to market, but two, make it more equitable um, because that, that's obviously a large problem. And so, you know, across that, that whole chain, you're seeing already CROs or um, CDMOs, you know, uh, bring that into their, their, their process. Um, and so I'd say that's probably where we're spending more time. Uh, late stage phase three recently commercialized assets. Um, it, it's going to be important uh, for these companies uh, going forward. Great. Charles? So I feel like the train already left this uh, left the station with, um, and the seminal event was probably the passage of the High Tech Act by President Obama mandating the use of electronic health records, which took us from only about 20% utilization to now well over 90% utilization of the EHR. Because without putting records, without digitizing records, when when doctors were writing notes on charts, that data couldn't be used. Right. And now these data scientists have data to work with because data is being put into these these EHRs. Now, ironically, I guess with AI and machine learning, maybe it's not as critical that it goes into that structured format, but maybe not. Well, you know, I, I think it is because when data was trapped in your cardiologist's office um, on, on her shelf, it wasn't being used. Right. It wasn't able to train the AI models. Yeah. And so now, so, so, so I think that seminal event is behind us. I think the train's left the station. It's, it's gone for good. I, I recall in the late 90s, early 2000s, health insurers were giving doctors free Palm Pilots. Yep. And there was a view that information technology was gonna start disrupting healthcare during the dot-com bubble, and it didn't happen. Um, and so it feels like this time is for real. Yep. Uh, physicians and other medical practitioners I mean, have you smartphones could say that like all of us do. the 90s with value-based care, right? The risk contracting that occurred and there was a and huge the pullback that, and there really wasn't the technology right. to do it. Just real quick, Mike and Dom. Yeah, I just echo uh, earlier thoughts around structural imbalances in healthcare. Um, there's real supply demand issues that need to be fixed, typically through technology. And there's a lot of burnout, right? Even with the supply, the supply doesn't want to be the supply anymore. If you're a nurse <laughs> and you've been practicing for 25 years, you're retiring and there's going to be a cliff. And so how do we think about investing and in using technology that solves that issue? It's not necessarily solved, solvable, I should say, uh, but there are going to be technologies and companies that uh, tackle that problem. Yeah, I think two fronts, one of which is Mike mentioned this use case for AI earlier, where it, an ambient listener is now note taking on behalf of the EHR. So it's really high tech act step two, right? I think watching the development of that singular use case is going to be indicative of how far AI can go in this slow moving beast that is the healthcare industry, right? We've been talking about capitation for most of our lives up here. Uh, and CMS is going to move slowly. But that, I think, is the best AI use case adoption where the, every single angle across that tool is a winner. Uh, the economics are there. The provider gets time in their day, et cetera. So I think all eyes on that one to see what will happen next. And then in terms of your other investments, as you're thinking about tools, RCM, et cetera, think about a company and its ability to increase its operating ratios or just perform better with the use of tech, whether they develop it or an expectation of a third-party tool that will come soon.